while my time here has now come to an end. I want you to know that in the last days and hours of my life, you inspired me. You filled me with hope about the next chapter of the great American story when you used your power to make a difference in our society. Millions of people motivated by simply human compassion laid down the burdens of division. Around the country and the world, you set aside race, class, age, language, and nationality to demand respect for human dignity. That is why I had to visit Black Lives Matter Plaza in Washington. Though I was admitted to the hospital the following day, I just had to see and had to feel it for myself that after many years of silent witness, the truth is still marching on. Emmett Till was my George Floyd. He was my Rayshard Brooks, Sandra Bland, and Breonna Taylor. He was 14 years old when he was killed, and I was only 15 years old at the time. I would never ever forget the moment when it became so clear that it could easily have been me. In those days, fear constrained us like an imaginary prison and troubling thoughts of potential brutality committed for no understandable reason were the bars. Though I was surrounded by two loving parents, plenty of brothers, sisters, and cousins, their love could not protect me from the unholy obsession waiting just outside the family circle. Unchecked, unrestrained violence and government-sanctioned terror had the power to turn simply a stroll to the store for some Skittles or an innocent morning jog down a lonesome country road into a nightmare. If we are to survive as one unified nation, we must discover what so really take roots in our hearts that could rob Mother Emanuel Church in South Carolina of her brightest and best, shoot unwitting concert goers in Las Vegas, and choke to death the hopes and dreams of a gifted violinist like Elijah McClain. Like so many young people today, I was searching for a way out, or some might say a way in. And then I heard the voice of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. on an old radio. He was talking about the philosophy and the discipline of nonviolence. He said, we are all complicit when we tolerate injustice. He said, it is not enough to say it will get better by and by. He said, each of us has a moral obligation to stand up, speak up, and speak out. When you see something that is not right, you must say something. You must do something. Democracy is not a state. It is an act. And each generation must do its part to help build what we called the beloved community, a nation and world society at peace with itself.